Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Walking in Her Shoes with Lizzie Dow and Kizzy Dow. Before we begin, though, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you stay to the end. We have a fantastic episode lined up for you tonight. So, Kizzy Dow, are you ready for our conversation, my dear? How are you tonight? Oh, I am extraordinarily wonderful i'm fantastic how are you feeling with your beautiful self looking all jazzy <laughs> i had to do something because i mean this this whole week is i mean it's been one long week and i you know we uh i say tgif every thursday because i say lord thank you thursday one more day one more day but um actually no we're having a ball over here things are happening and I'm just so excited to be spending this time with you tonight. I mean, oh, me I mean you know, it's just a good thing to be able to hang out with your girls. You know what I'm saying? Or your girl. You know? Yeah, we're going to talk. I just want to talk. How how y'all doing out there? We never asked y'all how y'all doing. How y'all I know doing? that's right. Put it in the <laughs> comment section. Let us know how you're doing. Let's check the temperature. How you doing? That's right. How you doing? You so, know, I was thinking but, before we get started, I was thinking huh? one time. Maybe we could do a, a Q and A show. Maybe if the the guests or uh, the fans or viewers or whatever write in and ask questions uh, about Lizzie Dow and Kizzy Dow, maybe one time we can do a, a Q and A show so well, they that's... can know a little bit more about us uh, personally. Maybe our likes, our dislikes. Um, about our life anything anything well i think that's going to be a um i think that would be a fantastic show but i'm also thinking about doing something really daring in the near future and that's going live we'll see though we'll put some pillars out and we'll see <laughs> we'll live, see. Huh? go live how about that <laughs> but we have to do some we'd have to do some planning for that so we can make sure you know you know what we that we're actually answering the questions that are that are out there and that you know I don't know. That's a little like, uh, we'll see. Right, right. <laughs> Before today's topic, we are going to talk about your hurdles. Are they blocks or are they tools? Hmm, that's a question. Would you like to start us off, Kizzy Dow? Well, yeah. So let me bring everybody up to speed. Just a quick refresher. The, this topic came from a vision that I had um maybe nine months to a year ago maybe longer of Liz and the Lord was gracious enough to show me this really beautiful vision of her walking along a path and the path by everything in a vision or a dream um if you could hold on to the memory of it or capture it in your mind it's significant. There's, it's symbolic. It can be symbolic. It could be a warning. It could be whatever the father is trying to convey to you. But this particular vision, and I say that it was a vision because I was not asleep. It was a full color vision. But in any event, she was walking by herself along a very narrow path. Where, where she was walking upon was not pavement or cement, but it was sand. It was sand. But as she was walking along on this path, now let me tell you, ahead of her was the sunshine. Ahead of her was this brightness. But as she was walking, there were hurdles, large track and field, if you will, hurdles that you would have to take some momentum and strengthen your legs to jump over. Take skill to do that, right? But in the vision, Liz was not jumping over the hurdle. She was not going under the hurdle or around the hurdle, but Liz picked up her hurdle, not angrily, not with anxiety, 
she picked up the hurdle and she laid the hurdle on her arm like this. She's walking along again. She picks up another hurdle. Walking along another hurdle. So down the uh, sand a piece, she's got a collection of hurdles on her arm. But what the Lord showed me in the vision is that Lizzie Dow took all of the hurdles and very patiently took them apart. She took the hurdles apart and she used the hurdles that were there to stop her, that was there to block her, there to hinder her and discourage her. She took those hurdles and made a staircase to her next level. Wow. So that's where this topic comes from. It was a very profound vision. Well, we shared that, um, was it last week or week before last, uh, Lizzie Dow? Um, well, the first time you told me it was, it was a while ago and it, it stayed in my thought. You know, it stayed in my thought as, you know, we talked about encouraging and, and inspiring others. Mm -hmm. So um, we did talk about it. We revisited uh, about, yeah, maybe about a week or two ago. About a week ago. So yeah. that's where this topic, you guys, is coming from. So my question to all of you, for you to answer within your own self and answer honestly, are the hurdles in your path? Are they blocking you or are you using them to make, are you using them as a tool to make a staircase or whatever you need to do to get over that hurdle? What is the hurdle for you and what are you doing with it? That's what the topic is. Wow. And that's, you know, and thank you for sharing that, you know, that vision, not only with me, but sharing it with others so that they can use that to help them to overcome the challenges that we may face. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking about that as we talked about that being our topic. And I thought it was so profound. And I think when you have vision and when you have drive and when you have perseverance and when you have determination, and even if, you know, see what I've learned to do was educate myself on different subjects and different topics and you know and I, and I always always I listen to Les Brown I listen to motivational speakers you know and then as I start listening to successful people I start modeling myself after them because success principles they leave clues when somebody is successful and, and the, the 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 amazing thing in it and I mean successful not just in business not just in money but I mean in life period because you need a model to model yourself by, you know, I, people often ask children, you know, what do you want to be? Because we oftentimes judge people or label people by their title or their work or the industry that they're in and not by the content and the character of their heart, the content or character of their being. So I think the better question would be to ask the children, who do you want to be? You know, so they can pull someone that they want to model themselves after, but then they can start putting their own uniqueness into that and molding themselves into the person or people that they're person that they're going to be or become. And so, you know, I, I, I modeled myself after strong women, women that I saw that were, you know, that were successful. You know, I can recall, you know, watching and I'm dating myself, but I can call, recall myself watching Knox Landing a long time ago for, yo, for, for those that are, you know, 50 plus, you know who I'm talking about. When Knox Landing in Dallas was popular, right? <laughs> so Knox Dynasty. Landing. Wait a minute, Dynasty. Let's not forget Dynasty. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but, but it was Linda. I remember her name. She was a successful real estate agent and she sold a house and if I'm not mistaken, you know, I don't know why 35000 just stays in my head, but her commission was like off the chart for this million billion dollar house or whatever she was selling. I don't know what it was, but she, the, but the point of the matter is her check had a lot of zeros. And I can recall being, being a teenager saying, oh, that's what I want to do. I, that's what I want to do. You know, I love houses. I could walk through them. And, you know, 
But that, you know, again, modeling yourself after somebody that's successful. And so what I later learned is that you can model yourself after male or female because you're just pulling successful attributes from that person and modeling yourself after them. And that was just so, you know, amazing to me. That's why, again, I say I listen to motivational speakers, you know, and what I learned, though, and this is what I learned later on, is that having a coach is so important. Having the proper coach is so important. So now I've surrounded myself with like-minded people, with coaches that are experts in their field that can help me to achieve what it is that walking in my purpose. So when we talk about the hurdles, when we talk about picking up the hurdles. See, earlier in life, as things happen, you know, to me, I just didn't understand. No, I didn't know that it was, and you know how sometimes you just don't know. I didn't know that it was not possible, if that makes sense, a double negative. Right. Right. <laughs> just like with the, with the real estate, you know, and, I, and I'm sharing it open and being transparent with these things because mm-hmm. I think that's the only way that it can help you because mm-hmm. sometimes people look at you at where you are. They don't see the, the struggle. They don't see mm-hmm. the hurdles. They don't see the, the dark nights. They don't see the tears. They only see where you are. Mm-hmm. So, so looking back and, and, and even, even the real estate, share a story about the real estate. I was absolutely terrified to take that real estate exam. I mean, I was absolutely petrified and I prayed about it. I went through the school. I didn't think that I was smart enough to learn the legalities of the contracts. So I studied and I studied and then I prayed about it. And I promise you, I can't even tell you how I passed that test. I can't tell you what was on it. I sat there and looking at that, looking at that form, everybody at our table, I had everybody praying at the table and I sat there and I took the exam and, 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 I, and I passed the exam. But it took me so many years to even go to the school because I was afraid and fear kept pushing me back. But again, like you said, Kizzy Dial, about the hurdles, that was a hurdle that I had, I said, face the fear because what is fear? Fear is false evidence appearing yeah. real. Appearing real. There was no evidence that I didn't have the intelligence to pass a real estate exam. I just saw realtors, for some reason, you know how you get a, you, you, as as a child, you see somebody that's bigger than life. And I don't know why realtors just seemed like that was bigger than life to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it seemed like it wasn't achievable. But again, picking up that hurdle and saying, hey, I'm going to lean into it instead of running away from it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I passed the real estate exam. And so I think that's how we achieve. And, 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 and it's okay to fall forward in things. It's okay to decide, this is not what I really want to do in life. I'm glad I had that experience. I put that in my, in my belt and then I keep moving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so that, 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 that's part of, you know, there's been a lot of hurdles, but that's part of, mm-hmm. you know, um, the hurdles. And I'm sure, Kizzy Dow, you've had hurdles that you've pushed through and, and, and you've overcome. Yes, I have. But you know, what sticks out to me in the vision with you was, <clears throat> you guys, this is, this is what I have been taught and what is true. When you're going through something, do you know that it's not so much what you are going through, even though it can be devastating, um, but it is the attitude by which you go through it with. Oh, that's good. That's good. So your trial for that moment is already at, it could be at a 10, but your attitude in it and through it can make it a 15. Especially if you are of the household of faith, and we're supposed to put, lay all of our burdens at the foot of the father, trust him and have faith and believe. Now listen, I only know this because I've been through things and my attitude has been raw high stank in mm-hmm. some of those situations when I was younger. I can't lie about it. That's how I learned how to be better. I wasn't moving the hurdle with my attitude. I had to move the, the hurdle with faith in God and with patience and confidence that I could do it. So, yes, I have had hurdles, but your, your demeanor in this vision 
is is what stuck stuck out to me too. You were going through, but it was how you handled every hurdle with this patience and taking it apart. Now I'm gonna tell you, I have learned over the years how to handle a hurdle. And again, like I said, sometimes it has not been pretty or it has not been ideal, but I've learned from those mistakes. I've learned from my own attitude and getting in my own way and prolonging my trial. So I've learned from that. Mm, that's good. Now, my hurdles, I'm gonna tell you, you guys listen, I got a secret. I have learned how to handle hurdles, not only from having teachers and spiritual leaders and spiritual parents and, and, and things like this, but I've also watched different people on how they persevere. And Lizzie Dow is one of those people that I've witnessed and I've seen for myself perseverance and how you keep pushing. Um, and I, I have a cousin that's exactly like that. Actually, um, he's been on the show a couple of times. He's like that. And I, I want that. So, so this is what, I think it, it's natural for them and it's beautiful. So I have to practice it. But man, I have great examples to follow. So I do practice it. Wow. And I talk myself into pushing back, praying and pushing back in a good way and taking my hurdles and going, okay, so you're sitting here. You're right here. You're kind of in my way. Huh. Well, we know you're not going to stay. You may not know. I talked to the hurdle. You may not know, but I know you're not going to stay there. So I'm learning how to use my hurdles as tools now. When you have a profound vision the way that I did, not only was it to minister to Lizzie Dow's heart and uplift her spirit, but boy, it taught me something. It was for me too. It taught me something. Daughter, watch how you go through something. Yeah. Watch what you say. Yeah. Don't look at that hurdle as that stumbling block, but actually that tool that you could use. Because if you use it as a tool, you're going to get to the next level. A lot of times the things that we go through, you all, not only is it for the making of us, but we've got to graduate to the next level. But we're not going to graduate to that next level if we go through that trial with a stank attitude. And you know, that, that, that's, that's so important because I do believe that your attitude determines your altitude. Yes, and see, does. one of the things that I've always held on to, and it had to be a seed that, that I was born with, that I was, that I was, I was saying now that I was blessed with, is that I always knew that there were greater things that I was supposed to do. I always knew that there was greatness inside of me, no matter where I started. I always knew that there was a greater purpose and my greater pur purpose was to be a service to people. I didn't know how, but I know that I love to help people to overcome. And as I was going through, one of the things that I, I learned through some great teachers was that as you are going through, you don't, allow it to 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 break you like that's your spirit your 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 like you said your attitude but your spirit if you know it's just like if you know that you know i know that this there's a pearl here i know that this is a pearl here mm -hmm. and so with being a literal person if i know that i know that i know without a doubt this is a pearl nobody can tell me that it's a it's a ruby mm -hmm. And right, so like, right, when right. you're, when you're, when the trials and tribulations come and they just, they, they, they're just like dirt, not just dirt, but mud, 
laying on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Know that you know that you know that there's greatness inside of you. And those trials and those tribulations, as you look back over them, you'll see that they did make you stronger. You know, people always tease me because they said, you know, before I was in a, a horrific car accident and had to go through rehab for two years. I mean, totally like dating my doctors for two years. And I just knew that I knew that my destiny was not to just sit there. When they told me that I was going to be sitting in a wheelchair and I wasn't going to be able to return to work and I wasn't going to be able to do those things, I kept saying, no matter what, that is not my destiny. And I think that's the thing. When you have a made up mind, see, our mind is so powerful. And, and when you, no matter what, and I, I can't say, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly when you pinpoint what made me, you said, pick up those hurdles. And, you know, and when I, when you told me that I saw it as a, as a, as a I saw the vision, I, I'm very, you know, visual. So your words turned into a picture for me and I saw the stairs and then I just saw each step. I saw, you know, being a divorced single mom, you know, I saw going through domestic violence. I saw the accident, you know, I saw some of the, um, some of the narcissistic, men that I've been in relationship with. I saw some, you know, like mentors and teachers and things that had their foot on my head that I looked up to. I, I saw those things when you said that. And I saw the staircase taking me up, up, up. And the one thing that I, that I do want to point out, because see, your mind is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Your mind is, you know, what you, what you think about. Think about this. Everything that is created out here, everything is created it started in your mind. It started with a thought. Somebody thought about it first before, you know, we weren't on, you know, on Zoom. We didn't have the capability. Somebody thought it was possible. And then it, they, then they went, took the necessary steps. Now, what if someone had told them that they couldn't do it? And then they, they just, they, it, it stopped them. We wouldn't have it, right? You see what I'm saying? So everything was a thought first. So I'm and this is one of the one of the amazing things that I thought about and it manifest and I'm so grateful for it, is that in my prayers I pray to have good, excellent, um, wholesome people with character, successful people, people that you know, I just wanted just I wanted amazing, phenomenal people around me. And this year. You know, I always talk about the Fortress Network. I can't not talk about it because that is the truth. You know, I kept coming into groups of people that were bitter, that were negative, that were jealous, that were envious. And every time you come into that, then your stairs, it's like you get knocked down a stair. You got to, you know, here's another hurdle on a step. You're on the stairs and you got a hurdle in your hand. And now you, you're raising yourself up and you're pulling yourself up and you got to pull yourself up even more. But you got this hurdle in your hand, so now you, you add another stair. You use it as another stair because guess what? You have a choice. You can make it another stair or you can let it weigh you down and drag you all the way down. And now you miss your purpose. So when I say that about the, 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 the people that I was able to meet in the Fortress Network, see, that was one of the things that I said, okay, I'm tired of being tired, Lord. I really want good, wholesome, positive people like-minded people, people that think like I do outside the box. I don't think there's a box. I don't even think that the sky is a limit because there is no, there's no ceiling on the sky. So I think that you can, you can just, you can be, you can do, you can have whatever it is that you have in your heart, your desire, but you have to line the proper actions up with it. And of course, without a doubt, I don't even have to say it, but I'm going to say it. And your faith has to be intact. So so as you continue to go up those stairs, what I did, I kept going up those stairs and I said, one of these days, I'm going to meet Les Brown. I said, one of these days, I'm going to meet Les Brown. I kept, I kept saying, I kept seeing him motivate. And I was like, wow, I would love to be a great motivational speaker. Like, I would love to be able to motivate people. I would love to be able to, somebody to hear my voice and decide not to commit suicide. Yep, that was one of the hurdles too. Because at, at one point in time, that was one of my challenges as well. So I would love for somebody to hear my voice and see, no, she kept going. She kept going. So I can go another day. I can go another day. I can step another step. Then, I, you know, we don't talk about what we're learning, but I got an invitation to Les Brown's birthday party. Wow. I was so amazed and taken back from it. You know what I'm saying? It was like amazing. But guess what? I didn't let the hurdles drag me down. I kept going and I kept going and I kept thinking it was possible. Well, I got now finally this week, I got an invitation to attend his final power voice class. Man, 
I'm so excited, but I'm just, I'm sharing that with you because I'm learning so much. Now you could you imagine, again, like I said before, and I'll say it over and over again, I don't get starstruck, but what I do get is I get struck by those that are intelligent, that are motivational, that are encouraging, that are inspiring, you know, that are positive, that are, that are, you know, I get inspired by that. So that was something that I want to share with you. If there's something that you want, everybody is human, this whole world, anything that you want to manifest in your life, all you have to do is get rid of the negative chatter. Get rid of all the negative chatter. Grab you some people around you in the front. I say, this is your, this is your, your stadium. Your life is your stadium. Mm -hmm. You determine who fill those seats in that stadium and which level. Mm -hmm. You determine who's on the front row. Mm -hmm. And you also determine who does not get in access to your stadium at all. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really up to you. And when we decide and discover that we do have that power inside of us, we have the power to help people to, we have the power. We, 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 God has given us that power. Mm -hmm. And so when we walk with that, it, it, it's amazing. And I'm just so happy to be able to have the team around me, you know, and, 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 and see, this is very different. The team around us are, the, are people that have vision, that, that mm -hmm. truly want to go somewhere in their life and that want to fulfill their purpose. Mm -hmm. And we have, the, we have the tools now to be able to, to do that. And that's what... That's what it means to me when, when we talk about your hurdles. Are they blocks or are they tools? Mm -hmm. The blocks, that's the negative chatter and it stops mm -hmm. you. That's the blocks of when the dirt gets so heavy or the mud gets so heavy that you feel like you can't shake it off. But I'm here to tell you, mm -hmm. what I do know is that you can turn all of these hurdles and I say wading in the water when the storms come. You can, you can wade through the water, wade through the water. Sometimes you have to stop for a minute and you have to breathe. Mm -hmm. and when you stop and you breathe, catch your strength and you keep wading. And, and if you keep doing that, guess what? At the end of the storm, there is a rainbow. There is. Lizzie Dow, something just kind of uh, dropped in my heart. You know, everybody, um, Liz and I are not trivializing, civilizing, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Yes. The hurdle. We're not um, making light of situations or things that are in your life that could be devastating and hard. We've been through devastation and we have survived hard. But in order to do that, in order to take a hurdle and use it as a tool, guess what it takes? It doesn't take physical strength. Mm -hmm. What it takes is willingness. You have to be willing to look at it differently. Willing to ask for help if you need help willing to learn how to manage it and then use it even against itself. Oh, that's good, Kizzy Dow. That's really so, good. I'm learning that I'm I'm not telling you something that I have perfected. I'm sharing things with you that I'm in class for right now. My life has taken a dramatic, positive change. And so I'm learning things about me right now and how to face a hurdle, pick it up, take it apart, use it against itself, or flick it out the way. So I'm learning where my power is. And I tell people, your strongest position in any situation in your life, or when you see something else going on for someone else and you're concerned, your strongest position is prayer. But we're not making light of anything or saying, oh, just get over it. I know that when I'm going through something really, really hard, the last thing that I want to hear anybody tell me is, Tina Marie, just get over it. Just 
come on, that's not helping me. That's not helping me process what's going on. And it's not teaching me how to get over it or how to use it, how to demolish it, or even how to pray about it. So we're just giving pointers about or advice, encouragement. Don't allow the hurdle just to sit there. Don't let it be a block, but use it as a tool. And that's what I'm, I'm learning right now. And you know what? I couldn't answer your question before about what were some of my hurdles in my life. Um, now I can. Mm -hmm. I, 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 never, I never think of my life as tragic or anything like that. Um, but I know that there has been hurdles. Listen, your hurdle to someone else might be a huge boulder that they just can't even see the sun in front of them. Everybody's thing is different. The severity of it is different. So I think my hurdle that I had to, one of, one of the hurdles was abuse from the past. Mm -hmm or record tapes or being played in my mind over and over and over again. You're not this, that, or the third. And Kitty, the, okay, go with ahead. that point, no, 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 with that point, before we forget it, with that point that what you're saying to get over that, as we're sharing what it was, also, if you can just share for a few minutes, what helped you to get through that those those negative tapes you know what i'm saying like you said those negative tapes that were going on in your head because you know sometimes you're, you're too close in the picture to see the frame i think that's the same because i have witnessed and i know our viewers have witnessed your tremendous growth from when you first started and when you say i wanted to bring that point and that credit to you oh. when you say the point about you know, uh, the negative tapes and, 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 and saying what you weren't or what you can't. See, this is what will help our viewers to understand, well, okay, that was the hurdle, but how did you get to this point of being able to be open? And you've openly shared some things that a year ago, you wouldn't even talk about and the, and versus being on, you know, on, on, on a podcast talking about it to help other people. So what was that thing? How, what, what switched it and said, you came from, you came from, let me show you something. You came from, I don't know if I stopped, if I did, no. You came from this, you came from that. Oh. To that. Oh. Why did you do that? Well, how? Well, uh, to be real honest, um, yeah, it's okay. So I'm being honest and transparent here. It's been very, very painful when you're having these battles going on. It's very painful. Um, but what I did was I recognized, I was honest with myself and recognized you need some help. Something you you you're trying to get to somewhere and you, you kind of need some help. But I was resistant to, now listen, I'm telling my story. Do not take what I'm saying and then you do it. I'm not advocating people not seeking help. I was not willing to go sit down and speak with someone. I, want, I really wanted God to do it. So what he did was directed me to people that I trusted in my inner circle that would tell me the truth, that I could go to them with a thought or a question about myself and they would answer it, they could pick it apart or we could pray about it. But I think the core of the change for me occurred because I was tired. I was emotionally tired. I was tired and I knew there had to be something better 
the things that I believed about myself based upon what I was told and how I was treated. I really truly did not believe that I was created for just that. That could not be it. There had to be more. So the more that I pressed into the Lord and built my relationship with him, once he told me how he saw me and how he loved me, that was just the beginning. That was like a dawn of a new day for me. Yes. But it, it, it was, I think, being willing. I, I want to share a vision that I had of myself. This is, oh my God. Ooh, this is personal, but I'm going to share it because it was true. And um, I knew that there was better. So the vision was, I was in the ocean and some people know that I, I do swim. I, I don't anymore because of the inner ear problem, but I swim. I have snorkel and all of that. But in the vision, I was swimming, swimming in mud. There was barely movement. The, I, I was completely engulfed in mud, thick mud, but just a little bit ahead of me, I saw the turquoise waters. I could look to the left and see the blue water, the topaz water. I could look to the right and see the sky blue colored water. I was in the mud and I was swimming trying to get out of this mud because I was looking for my better, mm. but I would not give up. And I, in the vision, I was crying out to the Lord, Father, I do not want to be in the mud anymore. Please clear the way for me. Give me the strength Give me the grace, Father, to get through this mud so I can wash myself, my life, my brain, my heart, my spirit off in the crystal blue waters that are just ahead. Wow. Wow. So when I had that vision of myself, let me tell you guys, I dived into prayer. I said, Lord, whatever is not right, fix it. Give me the courage and the grace to go through it. So it's being willing. You got to recognize it. Got to do the work. You have to do the work. If you're not willing to do the work and you're not willing to be honest with yourself, no one else can be honest with you because you'll take it as an insult. Absolutely. That is, that's so powerful. And thank you for sharing that with us. The mm -hmm. um, recognizing that there is an issue or a challenge. Yes. You know, being yes. honest, needing help, yes. with the willingness yes. to receive the help and telling the truth. And not only not only telling the truth, but also being able to receive the truth because yes. you've selected healthy people to be around you or even those yes. that are seeking help themselves. Because when you were talking about that, and I was thinking about, you know, wh how what was what was it with me? And I think part of that was the fact that. I just, I made it up in my mind. And, and, and again, this is not healthy thinking when you think that you have to do it all by yourself and that you, that you, you know, so that willingness to get help. And I, and I always do this. And I say, you know, I say this on, on a lot of our uh, uh, podcasts because the willingness to get help and, and sometimes the brokenness that's on the inside of you is so great that you do need others around you that can help you break through that brokenness. Because remember, it's years and years of tapes that are played in your head, negativity that's been, that's, that's why, you know, I'm such a stickler about people not speaking negative over children. Oh. Speak that over children and they start a that 
because they only know what you teach them of themselves as they're right. growing up and they rely on the adults around them to give right. them a good understanding of who they are and that's what they, that's what it means about being an impressionable young person or a young a child so i had to be willing to go and get professional help because the because you know i mean we can go and we can paint up all day long we can put on clothes and we can you know go out and and, and you know shoulders up and, and and head up and all of that and be just as broke on the inside and so for me of course i started with prayer you know I, I, the, you know and then i allowed god to show me where I needed to go. And so some of the steps, and we said that those hurdles are not, we're not taking light of those hurdles. As we start to go through even deeper of our in our stories, you'll understand that we're not taking those hurdles lightly at all. Because mm -hmm. multiple times those hurdles almost ended my life. So I know, I know without a fact, I mean with a with without um question the hurdles are not to be taken lightly, but they are to be used to inspire us to hold our head up. And sometimes I had to hold my head up and hold my breath at the same time, just to get to the next step, just to get, just to know that I could. And so I'm saying out there to you that, you know, the, the necessary steps is something that you would have to come up with. You'd have to come up with your own plan, action of what it would take. But what we're saying is that you can't be afraid to execute. There are right and tons and tons of books out there to be able to lean into and find out what is it that I need to do to change the situation and whatever it is you have the power and ability to do that you know when I when 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 I hit my head on the steering wheel and airbag hit me so hard that it actually I was told that it severed three parts of my brain and that I would the you know memory you know, again, I'm not talking about this lightly, but I'm finally at a place, a healthy place that I can talk about it because when you're on the other side of that and you know the steps, why hold that blessing and that gift to yourself? That's Other right. people. So That's as right. I, said, I needed to generate new neurons, I didn't just sit there in a pity party with the covers over my head. I got up and I started reading books. I got up and I started playing the cognitive learning and the reset games that they told me. And I can't stand playing games, you know? But I had to do those things. I had to date my doctor seven days a week, almost seven, five days a week, because Sundays they gave me a break. But I'm just saying, you know, I had to go through uh, going to a uh, uh, massage therapist three days a week just to unloose the, 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 the tightness in my, my whole body. So, no, definitely to your point, Kizzy Dow, we're not saying that any of the hurdles are to be taken lightly. But what we are here for is to help to encourage you to say, what I know is that if you keep pressing in, you keep pushing, you keep stepping up, you keep waking up, you keep getting up, you know, again, I, I lean to to now, you know, I'm just happy to talk about Les Brown because it's something I've been wanting for all my life because he inspired me so much. And he, he talks about the greatness that's on the inside of you. Nobody tells you that. And I think that's what's so powerful. Now I have, and I, and I wanted this. And remember I said I prayed about it? So I have yeah. mentors around me that are now, yeah. that, are, that are so secure in their own right and that are so in a healthy place themselves, they don't mind pouring into me saying and letting me know there is greatness inside of you. The things that other folks told you, they tell you things for reasons that are either self-serving or to keep you from seeing who you really are. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. you know, we buy into that oftentimes. So you have to be around people that are positive, that are like-minded. And I'm going to advocate and advocate and advocate for the Fortress Network. I'm going to advocate and advocate and advocate for healthy, strong mentors and relationships and advocate for mental health awareness. Make sure you go and you get, if it, I said it before and I'll say it again, if you break your arm, you break your finger, you break your fingernail or what have you. If you break your fingernail, you're going to the nail tech to get it fixed or you're going to saw it down yourself. What's wrong with going and reaching out to get help? It's because the world has told you that it's something bad if you have something mentally wrong. It's not be that you're defective. It's that something got broken. And it could have been broken through means that you had no control over. You know, some things we witnessed as children, you know. And some of the things that I witnessed as a child threw me straight into the path of domestic violence, you know. So I'm just saying, you know, in our few minutes as we start to wrap up, because we always go deep and we have to come to a... I need to say, I need to say this one thing though. You guys, um, listen, let me clarify something. 
um, I'm not opposed to getting help. Mm-hmm. Our community, the African American community, is underserved uh, when it comes to mental health issues and getting the help because of stigma. And I have sought help professionally when I was younger. Um, I wasn't developed um, in my beliefs at that time, not that developed, not as strong as I am now. And I'm not opposed to seeing someone now, but before when I had medical professions, professionals that wanted me to go see someone, those were not godly people. So I was very guarded about who could sit down and counsel me and help me through something. Because if you're giving me advice that's against what I believe or not based upon the word of God, I thought that it was not going to do me any good. So I'm not opposed to sitting down with someone but they must be a godly person. And um, we got something else too. Um, we have a couple minutes that we have to wrap up, but it's just to that point you're saying, and it is, you do have to have someone to counsel you, but the person that counsels you, it has to be the right counselor. Yes. And it, I definitely agree with that. It has to be the right counselor for the right person. The right so counselor. the one thing too about our power is that in our power, we have to know that we have choices. So when you go and you hire somebody, because you are hiring somebody, a medical professional, when you hire that person, it has to be the right person for you. So you have you have the power to interview them. Mm-hmm. You have the power to interview, to connect with them. Mm-hmm. You have the, 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 the same thing, like any any anything that you're hiring somebody for, that's the one thing too, is that we release our power. We forget that we have it. Mm-hmm. In our brokenness, we forget who we really are. And that's why we're going to do the series on brokenness and, and, and the tools. PTSD is one of the one of the one of the culprits yeah. that we're going to yeah. attack. So yeah. all of these different depression, anxiety, mm-hmm. all of these things that are hidden issues that come and they come to steal our joy, to steal who we are, to steal that glow that you have right now, Kizzy Dow. You're starting to walk, and I see it. You're starting to walk into who you are. You're starting to be able to bless other people because of who you are, because of your words, because of your actions, because you're able to execute, because you now have people around you that are speaking positivity into your life. This is what I'm talking about. And this is what we're demonstrating. The same thing for me. I have mentors. I have teachers. I have coaches that have that have godly hearts that are pouring into me now as I pour into others. See, my issue before was I was pouring into others and I didn't have anybody to pour into me. So I kept getting drained. The Nichols once said, give out of your saucer and not out of your cup. And see, when we give out of our cups instead of our saucers, guess what happens? We deplete the cup. So we have nothing to quench our own thirst. Okay. So Kizzy Dow, we we, we had so much good stuff stuff and to share today and i hope we weren't talking over each other trying to get all this information out. <laughs> it's okay that's what makes it fun hey what's about tossing the ball we were about hold on i got some brokenness i gotta talk about wait hold on give me, wait a minute, give me that ball back we've been we fighting back and forth for this uh the little bit of time on the basketball whatever you call it but we just have a heart to help people and we just want to yeah. make sure that we you know that we're sharing that we're in order that we're doing what we need to do because this truly is a calling you know we enjoy coming before you every week uh you know sometimes our weeks by the time thursday come around it's like one long day and here come thursday again and we're like here we go <laughs> or whatever day we end up dropping it out there but you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so kizzy Dow, we have one minute and we need you to close us out in one minute, my dear. You guys, listen, we always say it. Stay encouraged. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. There's nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong with being, have a conversation with yourself first. Look yourself in the mirror and talk to you, okay? If you have a hard time looking back, If you have a hard time just standing there, 
and really dig in deep, come on, let's do the work. It's all love, but love yourself first. Love yourself first. It's, it's going to be okay, but you have to be willing to do the work. So listen, don't forget, you guys, that we love you. We care for you. Our hearts and our prayers are with you, with everybody. Bless your heart and all your parts. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you come on back. Meet us back here next week with a brand new topic and more from Lizzie Dow and Kizzy Dow. Y'all stay fearless. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.